it could have been that he found her at, you know, when he was in his voyages. And that would entail that they are beings and there's more than one. Therefore, Anunnaki's. I love the universe that you've created yes. more than this universe. Yeah, that's, that's what I believe. Hi, I'm Caitlin. And I'm Charlie. And welcome to Outsmarting the Shadows, where we help you survive horror movies. That we do. So yesterday we covered episodes one through three of The Fall of the House of Usher. Yes, we did. And today we're covering three through six. Okay, okay. So as I understand that there's eight episodes. In there total. are. Mm. So tomorrow we're going to cover the last two. I see. Okay. Yes. So I kind of took a totally different stance yesterday than I am today because this series went crazy. You think so? <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, episode... I mean, it kept up with a lot of uh, jump scares. They're all jump scares so far. They are. In my opinion. Well... I mean, they're not cheap. There's always a monster or something that there's like silent, 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 something's happening. Bam! Loud music, really fast, and you know, a monster is right in the in the front of the screen. I mean, that's true. That's true. We we do have to go through spoiler warnings like right off the bat. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't seen Fall of the House of Usher, it is on Netflix right now. It's a very new show. We really recommend that you check it out. It's based on Edgar Allan Poe's short story of the same name written in 1839, The Fall of the House of Usher. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, spoilers for episodes four to six. If you haven't watched yeah. them, you should go watch them now. You should go watch them. Four to six. Um, once we're done with all of them, mm -hmm. I think we might do like a recap of everything. So in that episode, we might spoil everything. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're it, spoiling it. It's still a little bit hard to me on this show, kind of like come up with tips, you know, on how to survive this show because it's it's really like an odd situation that's happening. Well, I mean, one way I would put it, just don't be a 1% of a 1%. <laughs> and I guarantee you, most of the people watching this show right now, they're not uber billionaires that control the world. Yeah. I mean, I could be wrong, you know? Yeah, I mean, our audience could just, just be the 1% of the 1%. Right? Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Like, that's why we have, like, 50 subscribers at the point of this episode. Right. It's because... I, I, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. Yeah, yeah. But if you are not the 1% of the 1%, you're relatively safe. Yeah. I doubt that anything that's happening to this to these horrible people, which at right now, if you're like these people, I have zero tips because I want you to perish. <laughs> I want you to die to go the way of the dodo like the people in this show are going. Right? There's no empathy. I mean, except the only one I really like is Juno. Which one's Juno? She's the wife. Oh, yeah. But she's not the 1% over 1%. No. He's just using her because she's a, a, a trophy to show that people can jug. Can take know, his can, drug. Can, can chug on those drugs all day and all night. Yeah. Now, I want to go back. Which, so, Which I'm pretty sure at one point she's going to try. We don't know yet. It hasn't happened. She's going to try to get off the drugs cold turkey. And she probably will meet a horrible demise because of that. Oh, yeah. Maybe she will. But she's so far, she's my favorite character. She is. She's my favorite character She always as looks well. like a little doll. Always she's, happy. Really? I think she always looks sad. Yeah, but every every time she tries to kind of like be with them, she's like, oh, I'm, she you wants know, to be so like, much a part of the family, Tamerlane. Yeah, at, at one of the episodes, I, I don't remember which one it was. Maybe it was the uh, number six where she's like talking to the ghost. Oh, what the, you know, what the hell are you doing here? And she's like, I'm supporting. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah, so that was the episode entitled Goldbug. And mm -hmm. that episode was when Tamerlane dies, where she just starts to go crazy. And I hope that Juno is okay, because she that. flings a, a mic stand, and it the base, those things are heavy. Yeah, but she's fine. She's fine, because in the first episode, you, you were watching the death of the last three. And she's in the she's in the funeral. Oh, that's right. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So she's okay. I mean, goodness. earlier in previous right. episode. In the in episode one. Yeah. In episode yes. one. So there's a lot to unpack here. I disagree that it's all jump scares. Mm. Like as an example, when Victorine goes mm -hmm. crazy, she is 
funding her girlfriend, Alessandra, Dr. I think her name is Dr. Burke. I don't remember his, her last name, but mm -hmm. her first name is Alessandra. She, um, she's funding this research to, for heart surgery to like put this implant in. One of the most horrifying moments in the whole series is when Victorine, when her dad opens the office door. Right, and she's just... And her girl, she's installed the heart pump on her girlfriend's dead body. Which is working. The, the, the heart is pumping. But there's, it's a dead heart. Right. And then she slowly plunges this knife into her chest. Yeah, that was kind of hard. That was, yeah. I mean, it's, I think this, this show is more about being in a situation that's so gruesome, it's overwhelming. Mm. Like, like can you and the the thing is it lays the groundwork for so many of these events you know you kind of know that it's coming mm -hmm. and it's like this something horrible is constantly sneaking yeah. up on you and, and what i find what i find interesting that in every episode so far you know you see each of these horrible people that are gonna die you know they're gonna die and for a moment you're like Oh, maybe they're not such such bad people. Right. But right, the second the you second think you that, think that they do something. They, they're the most horrible, terrible. horrible things that right? you can imagine. And you're like, nah, nah, they're good. Oh, they're it's good that so they die. awful. So, but but still, yeah. if 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 you're the one percent of the one percent, right, right, and you know, let's play devil's advocate here, okay. and we want to help you survive your so you can continue being your horrible ways, or uh, maybe correct your ways. Nah, that won't happen. <laughs> so, what tips could we give that 1% of 1%? First of all, I think that you should look at this because they are dealing with an extraterrestrial. That's what I think. And it's, it's, not, it's not supernatural. It's just technology. That would be interesting. It's high, you know, with really futuristic, you know, out-of-this-world technology that is so far beyond our technology that we consider it to be magic. I always love that. That's, I th that's, that's always a that's really good explanation. That's how I see that, that lady, that Vernon. death lady, the one that we thought was death. Yes. Because people can see her. Yes. She can be recorded. Yes. And she, uh, as we see in one episode, I don't remember which, which one of the episodes were, she's been alive for, looks like, you know, decades or centuries. And yes. she's always tied to the, you know, the highest 1% of the 1% that... Probably evil, evil people. So when we first see Verna, it's in a bar that doesn't really exist. She says specifically it exists outside of space and time. Mm -hmm. And she asks Madeline, mm -hmm. what does she really want? And Madeline, would you want to be famous or would you want to be rich? Yeah. And Madeline would you says... Have to have, would you like to... And she's just rich. She doesn't she's even, rich. Yeah. Yeah. She's like, because I don't want... I want to be able to to change the world and I want to be able to not have a man rule yeah. over me. Which is interesting that for everything that's happening is not affecting her directly. It is her her family. Her family, but you know, not maybe because she doesn't have any children. Maybe, but but I feel like they seal that bargain with that New Year's Eve kiss. Mm -hmm. Because Madeline is the one who's really the smart one who remember in that same same conversation verna says it's a good thing you're here to help that one meaning roderick yeah when they're really young because while roderick is smart he's mm -hmm. not even close to madeline smart no no madeline is the mastermind behind he all has this. no he has no uh, original thoughts yeah like that speech that he said tells his children is the exact same speech that that guy told yeah. him you know, Rufus in the seventies. Rufus Wil Wilmont yeah. um, Rigwald. Mister Rigwald tells him that <laughs> that like you need to. I'll, the only thing I want to hear from you is sir, yes, sir. Right. And they're like, okay. Yeah. What a horrible thing to say to so, anyone. And then he says it to his children. So I think she's either an Anunnaki. Search Anunnaki. Okay. She's a Q. Oh, that would be Star cool. Trek. I like that one so because. It makes sense. Everything she does, it co you know, it lines up with Q Q's powers. sort of humor, yeah, too. Yeah, Q humor and Q Where powers. At the end, he's like, this was really fun. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or she's one of the, one of the elders or the... Oh, the I, elder gods. The elder gods from Deep Space Nine. Oh, I love I that. I don't remember. What were they called? 
Um, that Cisco at the end turns into one of them or follows them into the ether. I don't remember. Yeah. I'm sorry. It was uh, the the keepers or the watchers, something like that. I don't remember that were in the in the. Um, I'll think about it through the episode, and I'll I'll blurt it out if we. So that's remember. that's. Uh, can you tell us if you remember that right now? Because I don't know. If yeah, I'm gonna I, I don't I don't remember what they were called. Yeah, but I think she's either an Anunnaki, okay. right, with you know all the power, and she's the one that helped humanity be where it is, right? Right. She's a Q, right, and that puts this show in the same timeline in the same universe as Star Trek, oh, or she's so one cool. of those elder gods, but they're in you know. They're in, what, the Gamma Quadrant? So they wouldn't be <laughs> near Earth. I mean, that's true. But supposedly, if you're a god of a, of a race, you can travel all over. Remember, yeah, but they don't do that. The Q do that. But that's true. But remember in Voyager when they found remnants of, like, angels, like a species that is also known as angels? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't remember what episode it was. But they, that had traveled to Earth and then come back, yeah. and it was just technology, like what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. The advent of, like, Christianity. And, like, I think it's interesting that you're saying that it could just be technology unknown. What if every single horror situation in most movies that we see is has something to do with technology that's masquerading as supernatural issues? Nah, but that wouldn't make sense in kind of like The Nun and Annabelle. You know, and the yeah, that's during true. Thing. Those are just demons. Yeah, they're you know? just uh, demons. And how about, uh, you know, Constantine? <laughs> Although I'm not sure, is Constantine a horror movie or an action movie? I find that it's an action movie. I think it's a scary action. It's intended to spook you out. Like, yeah. spook yeah. you out? That's not a thing. Yeah. Creep you out. Creep you out, yeah. <laughs> so that's what I think. And if you treat it like it's, you know, an Anunnaki, mm -hmm. Q, or, or a being with high technology, then all you have to do is understand... It's motivation. Right. You just need to have a conversation. Which, with this lady, the Malu, her motivations are really simple. Very simple. Yeah. Don't be an asshole. Yes. Yes. Don't be an asshole. And I'm giving you an opportunity. The choice. The choice. And, but you know what's interesting? I've read a ton of articles about, like, what other people think of this and, mm -hmm. you know, and their opinions. And all of them imply that Verna is sort of leading them down this path. Uh, of self-destruction and I disagree with that totally she is leading them how is she leading them well I don't like they're because they say that she's always the catalyst of the inevitable of the inevitable destruction well I think but, at a at certain point I think that is true but at that point she gives them a choice well but it's I don't even think it's I mean I do agree with that but as an example tamarine Remember, Tamarine has this weird sort of sexual thing where she's trying to have someone replace her in her own yeah. life because she, for whatever reason, she wants to remove herself from everything that she's built. Cuckery. She's a cuck. <laughs> yes. And so her husband, Will, or Bill, um, he he ends up enjoying one conversation mm. with, the, with the prostitute. Her name is Candy, but she's actually Verna in disguise. Yeah. But, but it's just that one, and we don't even see the whole conversation. Right, we don't even see the whole conversation. Now, after that, Tamarine takes that and runs with the crazy and, and convinces herself that Verna is in videos, that he's having an affair with her. I mean, to be fair, she probably is in videos, but she's the only one that can see her. Yes, but here's the thing. The, that's the real question. Is it that... Verna is actually there and she's convincing Tamarine and Tamarine can see her or is Tamarine just going insane and what is madness like when she's breaking all the mirrors the real question that people are asking is at what point has Verna already done her job and madness has taken over and there's no more choice to be had because it's just mental illness no but I think I don't think that's it because because at one point um the the lawyer um, mm -hmm. Pim. Like, yeah, Pim. Played by Mark Hamill Play, brilliantly. brilliantly. Right? You can't, I, he's I, amazing. I didn't even tell it was Mark Hamill until like the second or third episode. I was like, oh, you're right. It, it is Mark Hamill. Yeah, I knew it that, immediately. He's doing that raspy voice. He did as uh, kind of like the Joker voice combined with a, a deeper type of yes. Mark voice. It is, what it is an impressive. brilliant acting. So at one point in, in one of the episodes, he tell, tells his story that when he was 20 or 25, something like that, he was traveling the world and he went to the North Pole and he went places. And he said that he got to a place where he found beings that existed beyond time and space. Wow, yeah. And then he says, oh, of course he found her. 
I just uh, he he's a guy that you know can find any anyone. I didn't send police. I didn't send detective. I sent him. Right. And then he says, of course he found her. But then he said, not at the time or not when he thinks he did. That's true. It could have been. So it, it could have been that he found her at you know when he was in his voyages, and that would entail that they are beings and there's more than one. Therefore, Anunnakis. I love the universe that you've created yes. more than this universe. Yeah, that's that's what I believe. I mean, there's there's just Anunnakis, you know, and they're like trying to set the world straight right. and, yeah. and murdering um, or giving them the choice they so they them can the self murder themselves. Um, giving them the choice so they self murder. Can, yeah, self murder. You know, uh, which is it's not suicide because they're not actively thinking that they're going to kill themselves. So right, self they're they're. Giving them a push in a specific direction and saying, yeah. this will lead to your destruction. Do you really want to go? Right. So in the way that they, you know, developed humanity way back before any written script, like a lot of people think. Right. Yeah. Right. So now they're trying to set humanity straight. Yes. The Anunnakis. I wonder if these beings were in... We're like, if we had already understood them when we had the Library of Alexandria. Right. Like, maybe we were friends with them. But right. once the library... Just burnt off. Burnt off. Then suddenly they were like, well, you're not worthy of our friendship anymore. Right. That yeah. would be so cool. Yeah. Is this a, a whole bunch of lost history? Tell our listeners about the Library of Alexandria very quickly. It's a library that was very famous that had, allegedly, had a copy of every book ever produced through history. Right, up until that point. Up until that point in history. And it was extremely advanced technology that we had within the Library of Alexandria. The difference is well, not, that not, the distribution of technology wasn't as vast because there wasn't a way to distribute probably, that information. Not, maybe technology, but more more probably knowledge. Knowledge in math, knowledge in physics, knowledge yeah. in, in you know chemistry and all that type of stuff. Yeah. And then it just burnt down. Well, it didn't burn down. There was a war. There were, you know, people. There was a lot of stuff. There's a lot, a lot of history, of... which I'm not a historian. Right. So there are a ton of wonderful videos on I'm pretty YouTube sure there are about great that. YouTube's on you know yes. the history of the library, library of Alexandria. Alexandria. But allegedly, supposedly, um, humanity got set back a, uh, like a thousand years or something yeah. like that. So right now, technically, if that didn't happen, we would be in the year. 3,000. In terms of technology, in terms yeah. of our, our, our advancement, if the Library of Alexandria had not burned down. Or, you know, complete and total societal class would have happened already. That's true. One we, or the other. We would have driven more quickly into yeah. the ground. But more to this story, the right. Anunnakis, the would, Anunnakis would set things straight. Right. That's what I think. Yeah. Have you read anything like that? Uh... Not by Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, um, okay, no, but you know the theories of the people. I need to sit down and throw my theory in there. See what people think. You guys think? Oh, you mean in terms of the articles written? Yeah, yeah. No, of course not. Well, you are such not, an original thinker. They're not. They're not thinking clearly. They're, they're not. not they're not looking the at it like okay. You know the the clues are right there. Right. There's an extraterrestrial with you know really uh, advanced <laughs> technology. Yes, I mean. There's no evidence to support this yet. There's plenty of evidence. I think all the evidence is right there. I, I disagree. Wait, have you, you should scour the writings of Edgar Allan Poe and see if he, if right? he sub, subvertly mentions the yeah, Anunnaki. The Anunnaki, yeah. Right? Yeah, maybe in a cipher. Right. I'm going to have to read all his stuff. You just go right, get the original writings of right. him yeah. from yeah. like one of those ancient libraries. Yeah. He's yeah. not ancient. I mean, yeah. he lived in... Oh, we get to the 1% and, <laughs> and, 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 and try to find and buy all his original works. Wow. Okay. So we're now going to devote our entire life yeah. to Edgar Allan Poe. I mean, to it's, see it's if, a path. To see if the Anunnakis... Exist. Exist. Right. I guess that's what our channel is going to be about now, folks. Right. We are only going to look at the history of the Anunnakis. the Anunnakis within the writings of Edgar Allan Poe. Yes. <laughs> that, that sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. Oh, can you imagine what we would have to do? We'd have to get like an original piece of writing that he did mm -hmm. and do that. You remember what they did in uh, National Treasure where yeah. like they took the, the Declaration of Independence or whatever and they put like fire over it yeah, and they were yeah, like, look yeah. what you're doing. <laughs> and then the, the, the mystery unfolds. The mystery unfolds yeah. and we just ruin all these original times. Yeah. Yeah, but we would, we would be on 
you know, we would, on the trail. Right, we'd be on the trail. Yes, we would. Oh, it would be so cool if it led us to Europe. Right? I mean, it's probably going to, like, uh, when uh, the lawyer, what was, it, was his name again, Pip? Yes. So when he went, it wasn't close to the North Pole. It would lead us to the North Pole. That would be so cool, yeah. Arthur Pym. I mean, the North Pole sounds really cold. Yeah. Uh, it's okay, you know, it's a little jacket, you know. We get a so, jacket from Milo? Yeah, a little jacket from Milo right here. He's uh, He would be just sleeping all the way, you know. Yeah. If he sees uh, um, a, a polar, polar bear, bear. Then, you know, he'd probably poop himself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so would I. Yeah, wouldn't we all? Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you ever polar bears are the only, one of the only bears that actually hunt humans. Yes, so they if you see, see you. a polar bear, run. Yes, because they see you and they go lunch. Lunch. I'm gonna eat that person. Yes. Yeah. Grizzly bears will defend themselves and kill you. Yes. And black bears will be like, oh no, I don't want to deal with. I this don't want to do. This looks dangerous. So you know, if Just it's white, you know. run away. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, we need to get back. <laughs> yeah, let's get back. We were like, I don't know, he's not in polar bears. No, no, okay. But okay, hopefully you're still with us. Right, 20 minutes in, I swear, we're talking about the show. Yes, yes. So, uh, in episode one, or not one, in episode Three. four. Four, yes, four, four, episode four. In episode four, it's actually based on a... On an Ed Gallagher Allan Poe short story, a different one called Black Cat. Okay. And they change almost nothing. Really? Really. It is about a guy who kills his beloved pet and they don't he doesn't know why. It's like he a big madness took him over. He goes and gets an exact duplicate, and it's an apex predator who ends up terrorizing him to the point where then he's breaking down the walls and then it freaks him out and he rips its eye out and then he falls over and he dies huh. it is like the same story wow that's interesting but then in, in this one it's interesting that when he falls down you see the actual cat yeah like uh a really uncanny valley Toto. cg cat i don't yeah. know why. probably the cat didn't want to work that day probably yeah, yeah. They, I mean, working with cats is not easy. Uh, because it had, it had the collar. It had the Pluto collar. Yeah. So somebody just let him out. Yeah. And he, I don't think he really killed anything. And he just hallucinated all I, that? That's my... Because of all the drugs? Well, I, I do agree with that. But I'll be honest. My theory is that he didn't really kill the cat because I don't like the idea that he killed the cat. Mm -hmm. Like that scene when he takes the cat and he just squeezes its face and pops the cat's eye out? That was like... That was... That was uh, that, that was, was hardcore. hardcore. That was so, evil dead type effects. I've got to tell you, I was closing my eyes because I knew this was coming. I knew it. And I didn't and I didn't close my eyes fast enough and I saw the whole thing. But it looked really slapstick. It looked like Army of Darkness slapstick. Maybe to you, but to me yeah. I just saw like a cat like screaming with an eye being popped out and I was like that's not all right. I found it kind of like uh, Army of Darkness ish uh, slapstick comedy type. Yeah, I mean, well, it was because it's a cat mm. and it's a per like it doesn't really make sense except for the madness. Like yeah, the madness yeah. makes it like real scary. Because oh. because it's so fast that you're like, did he pop his did eye? Did he out? do it? But then in the other shots where you see the cat with the eye hanging out, oh yeah, that was intended. It was so funny that like when I closed my eyes, I closed my eyes just long enough for one, I was like, okay, it's probably fine. That's when right then the eye was like, <laughs> yeah, dang it. The eye just dangling. <laughs> So, um, I like that he accidentally, like, invites mm -hmm. this other horrible creature, Verna, and she pretends to be the cat. It's like she yeah. is the cat. Like, like in the previous episode, in episode three, she pretended to be the chimp. The chimp. And yeah. She, she was the chimp. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. You're right. Camilla was killed in four. Leo was killed in five. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So, Camilla... Uh, she was the lady who was like the marketing and she had the cool white hair. Yeah, no, but that was three. Oh, that was three, right? That was three, yeah. That it, Sorry, it, guys. It, it ended <laughs> in, the, in the cliff. Yeah. That, oh, she's dead. Where we, what is going to happen next? Oh, I see. I it's see. just we saw them back to back to back. We so did. It gets kind of foggy and like yeah. 5 a.m. watching this show. <laughs> right? Where we're like, you're like, are we going to sleep? And I'm like, just one just more. Just one more. Just one more. <laughs> just finish this one. <laughs> just this one. So it just turns into a fogginess of. Who died first and who died second. <laughs> but um, you know what I loved about Leo is we really like Leo mm. up until the point 
that he says that horrible thing about his boyfriend. Right, his boyfriend's tr just trying, trying to, to help help him. Why didn't you? And when he leaves, he's like, "Yeah, my boyfriend just quit. He's dead, and he doesn't even know it." <laughs> right? What a horrific thing to say! Yeah, like, like remember these people? They treat other human beings, other human beings like they're nothing, like they're like they're beneath them. Yes, like they're they're objects that are just either either please them or they don't. Yeah. Now, personally, myself, I don't know any one percent of the one percent, you know, multi-trillion billionaire billionaire that are really, but really like. If them. anybody in the, you know, and from any of, of you, the listeners, are a billionaire, that's a one percent of the one percent. Is that how life is? I don't right. Know. I I don't know. I mean, you know what I? Are you that horrible? <laughs> Please write it in the comments down <laughs> below. Tell us. Yes, I am that horrible. And I'm not horrible. In fact, all people are awful. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to burn your house down just for saying that. And then I will sue you for it. <laughs> right? So the other thing that you, you made this comment, and I was like, that's really true. All these horrible people have really sweet spouses. Yes, all their, all their spouses. But I think it's on purpose. Like, in comparison, you know, anybody is nice. In comparison to them, it could be the most horrible person in the world, but next to them, well, they look good. Because it's so interesting. The, their spouses aren't even that nice. They're just basically like they, they're basic, decent human beings. Mm, yeah. Like they're not even like, like super great people. They're just yeah. okay. Like, you know, like just uh, the, the workout guy. I forgot yeah. all the names. His name, his name is actually Bill Wilson, but yeah. yeah. The actor or the character? The character. The ca so when he kind of like says... Built. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Built. So when he says, oh, if I leave the keys, I'm never coming back. But then when her sister died, he came back. Listen, came are you okay? She's like, get out of here. Mamos. Mamos. <laughs> and she's like, man, this lady really deserves to die. Right? And like, what a sweet thing to do where he's like, we had a fight, like... You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna put all that, uh, all that all aside. That aside, and she has an opportunity to really apologize and. But she for them doubles, to she triples he down. Triples down he doubles, man. She triples, quadruples down. I right? can't believe. I'm like, dang. And even the lady, when when she was going insane, she was like, "Listen, um, you can just call him, and say you were right, yeah. and everything's right." And yeah. Like, yeah. I don't even think he would need that. I think he would just need let's figure it out. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he was he he didn't yeah. seem to have a lot of requirements and he took a lot of shit that guy. He he ate a lot of ass. <laughs> right? He's a man that's that ate ass, ass. <laughs> right? Yeah. He, he he she was a complete she was all into the cookery. Right? She made him eat ass all day all day and all that and he didn't even like it. He didn't even enjoy right? it. Right? It she was, was like now you you're going to do this now you're going to eat his ass. <laughs> Now she's gonna eat your ass, and you're gonna eat her out, and he's like, "Okay, yeah, okay." That's what you mean. I'm just gonna stand here and look. <laughs> it's, it's it's cuckery to the extreme. It really is. Yeah, it yeah. really is. I mean, if you're into cuckery, right? No, no kink shaming. No kink you shaming. You can be all. In fact, write a comment down below to see to know what what is cuckery like. What's the deal with it? Yeah. Right, but like this is the show for you. Yeah, this is the show. I've never seen it featured like that. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's interesting. So, um, once so she dies last. Yeah, that's uh, episode six. That's episode six. But that episode lays the foundation for Frederick, mm. Frederick, mm. <laughs> just they have weird names for Frederick to really go crazy. Mm. Because Frederick, he's been avoiding the fact that his siblings are dying and he's been basically saying, no, 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 no. The reason why they're dying is because they're not full ushers and full ushers are safe. Right. So he keeps telling his daughter, yeah. uh, Lenore, you're safe, I'm safe. She is the his sister, which is the full usher, which is the- Tamarine. Which he, is the babies that we see when yes. they're in the ninth, when he was kind of a good guy. Yes, he was kind of he was married to Annabelle Lee, who I think really made him a good person. Yeah, I think she dies. We haven't. We haven't yeah, we don't yet, know what happens to her. I think she dies. I think she she must die because there's there's just no way. But maybe she's in the wall. I don't know. He keeps talking he keeps to a wall talking and listening to a wall and uh, and know. and of course that reeks of Edgar Allan Poe. Mm. You don't. I don't know if you know the story, but like I don't know none of his some, stories. Somebody gets bricked into a wall. I thought he had to do with crows, but it's not crows. It's ravens. <laughs> different. I thought it were the same thing. They're not the same thing. Yeah. They're different I mean, they're animals. black. They fly. They're birds. 
It's kind of the same thing. Okay. Well, this is not something that you have to know because life will be just fine either way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll know it. <laughs> yes. Yes. I know none of his writing. So he goes down and he visits the squall frequently. Mm -hmm. And either I think um, Griswold, Mr. Griswold is mm -hmm. there, or I think Annabelle Lee is there. Mm. Or both. Or both. It could be. So anyway, so that episode really lays the foundation for Froderick to really go insane. Which we don't know yet. If he, I mean, you're starting to see him kind of like, Go insane with his wife and making her feel pain or something? Well, so he's anesthetizing her so that she's not, she doesn't, she's not conscious. She can't really get better. Yeah. He doesn't, he clearly doesn't have a medical staff. No. So those her. glasses aren't getting cleaned. I mean, yeah. The, I just, I don't, the, it's so horrifying to me that she's so totally burned. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've seen some burn victims and what they go through and i mean the pain kills you yeah it is absolutely horrific mm -hmm. to have skin grafts it is terrible so the idea that like she's sitting there and there's no care and she's slowly becoming more and more infected i just that's the most horrible that's the horror part yeah for me yeah but that's why like i don't think it's all jump scares so there yeah. are some jump scares, but sometimes just the situation, I'm like, this is terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. I follow. I follow. So it's Leo. We already talked about him, mm -hmm. the cat. Tamarine. Tamarine. Yeah. She dies. And then Victorine. Victorine. Oh, we got to talk about Victorine. <laughs> yeah. Victorine is my favorite character. Really? She, yeah. She is... Well, Juno is my favorite, but mm. Victorine is my favorite evil character. Okay. Because she plays herself out to be like this really good goody two shoes. Right? Like she wants to help humanity. Yeah. Oh, she wants I just... to help everybody. Yeah. 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 And I love that uh, Verna, you know, the what the Anunnaki. Yeah, the Anunnaki. Right? The Anunnaki Verna, who is pretending to be her heart patient. Right asks her these really poignant questions when she's in her office after she's murdered her girlfriend. Because right. she probably knows. And she's of like, course oh, she does. I just want to talk. I just want to talk to her. Yeah, I just talk to her. She's going to be performing the, the procedure. Well, the thing that she asks her that I think is the one of the most telling is when she says, would you rather be famous or would you rather help people? Mm. And I wonder... I wonder what would happen because I don't remember what she says. I think it's like, she's like, well, I know which one it is or something mm -hmm. like that. But I wonder if she'd really doubled down and said, I, I know it seems like I want the fame, but I really want to help people. I just sometimes don't know exactly how or something. She'd really been vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I wonder if none of it would have happened. Yeah, her. but at that point, she wasn't even paying attention. She was just listening to the sound, which was the sound of the... Of the, the machine the on machine. her girlfriend's Which, heart. But she did to her. It was so shocking that she just erased it from her memory completely. Yeah. Can we just give a shout out to that acting performance? Yeah. That was great. great that was amazing. Acting. The last time we saw her was in Black Panther 2. Oh, she was in Black Panther 2? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I think she played one of the, one of the guards. Mm. And she twirls a good stick. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember nothing about Black Panther. But maybe. Who knows? We got an IMDb here. We got an IMDb here. But that, it's interesting how she responds to the pressure that her dad puts on her about mm -hmm. human trials and stuff. And you see it coming. I don't know. But she, she reveals her cards when she has that fight with uh, Alessandra. Yeah, where she just forged all her signatures. Right. And, and she's just freaking out because, please tell me, you did not forge my signature because that would mean that she is on a... She's in hot water. In hot water, yeah. Yeah. Either either she puts her in hot water say, listen, this was forged, or she accepts it and then she's in deep shit. Yeah. She could lose, you know, everything. Her she license. She could lose every... Yeah. Her, her practice, everything. It is interesting to me when they say ushers don't make anything. Yeah. And... At first, I was like, okay, that makes sense. But then I thought, but I think that um, I think that she's a doctor, right? She must be a doctor because she's working with hearts and stuff. Mm -hmm. But no, 
She's nothing. None of them have any any practical skills. No. You take away their money. The one that had the skill is the the lady. Which lady? The her her girlfriend, wife. Alessandra. Yeah. Yeah. She was the doctor. It just it's so strange to me that you have all this money and you're not doing anything to educate yourself or better yourself or... I do it when you can pay the people who are educated well I don't I just don't I don't see that I don't understand yeah. what do you do with your brain all day just you know buy more people I don't know buy more people <laughs> buy more people That's just what think is. about ways to purchase yeah, humans yeah purchase humans yeah yeah everybody has a everybody has a price in this universe <laughs> and they and they can buy it it's like the guy when he's talking about the eyes of the goddess uh, from Egypt, they have kind of like a fetish with Egyptian Egyptian, Egyptian mythology, mythology and, yeah. and stuff. Um, he's like, oh, they they told me it was priceless, and all you need to know is, you know, how to buy this, how uh, how then you can buy right. them, the, and how you the can different the organizations. Yeah, you got to buy and you know buy a prime minister and buy this person, buy that person, yeah. buy a gate and, agent, and a couple of years later. I have bought a god. The with some, eyes of a goddess. Yeah, with some patience and a little bit of cash. Does that make me is, a god? Yeah, because with all that, he just spent what is to him just a little bit of money. Yeah. For rocks. Or just random rocks that belong to a goddess. <laughs> or to an Anunnaki. I mean, that would make them more valuable. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, <laughs> I, we will see. Okay, so let's talk about some survival tips here. Yes. All right. Yes. So, so you're a billionaire. We're going to help you out. We're going to help you out. If you have billions and billions of dollars. And the money won't save you. <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> so, so if you have billions of dollars, you're facing a lawsuit. Let's just go for the first one. Let's go for Leo. Okay. Okay. Leo's Leo kills a cat. Well, it Allegedly. could even it could even be before that. Okay. Leo has minions to clean his apartment. Yes, he does. And he? if he doesn't, he probably does. Yeah, but if he, he cleaned it himself. That's what I'm saying. If you don't have minions to clean your apartment and there's a dead cat, okay? You need people. You should have lots and lots of people. And if you don't have them, you get them immediately. To do what? To clean the apartment, to get rid of the cat. But how would, how would that help him? It would help him because then we would know if it was real or not. Because it wouldn't be him. Now, if it right. was, let's say it's real. Okay, let's. Or he let's, just woke up his, his boyfriend, told him, listen, I don't know what happened. He, this is yeah, the cat. exactly. I mean, if you're, if you're a billionaire. I mean, he, could, he could have just taken the knife away and just, listen, I found the cat like this. What is happening? I mean, there was a party. It's not like he's, he's the only one there. Yeah, but the other one knew what happened, allegedly. What other one knew what his, happened? His boyfriend knew what happened. To the cat? No, in the party. That's why he was asking what happened in the party. And he yeah, but like, that's my that's my point. Mm. If there was a party and there were multiple people in your home and the cat's dead and you don't know who killed the cat, you call your boyfriend, Listen, then it's a mystery it's, that you're both solving. Sure, yeah, <laughs> and you're Scooby-Doing it up. You're Scooby-Doing it up. And what, in order to make loyalties, you Scooby-Doo stuff. Yeah, yeah. That is you really... You Scooby-Doo stuff. That's yeah, what you do. That's what you so, do. So that would be your, your tip. For the billionaire, just scooby it up. Well, you scooby it up after you hire minions to come in and clean your apartment and to figure it out. Now, let's say the cat's really dead, right? Okay, okay. Then you've scooby it up with your boyfriend and you say, listen, so I loved Pluto same as anyone, okay. right? I don't know what happened. We're going to get to the bottom of it. I'm hiring the top detectives, okay. whatever. Okay. Would you like to get another cat? Yeah. And, you know. That is not the exact same replica. Well, sex. maybe he does want to get the exact same replica. Yeah, but, but that's a demon cat. Well, let's just, I'm just, listen, follow my logic here. Okay. So let's say he then, his he wants to get the same cat. Mm -hmm. If he, Even if he ends up with the same demon cat, it's not just him. It's him and the Scooby gang. Mm, so it's just a shared demonology. It's a shared possession okay. of madness. Where suddenly they're, you're both like, can you imagine if, if our cat ninja what, like came in and started acting crazy. Right? Yeah. Like we would both be like, this freaking yeah. cat man. Get the frying pan. Right? Pang. Well, okay, whoa. <laughs> that wouldn't be our response. Okay. But we would at least share the burden together. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no popping of ninja's eye. No. Okay. Oh my okay. god.
Yeah. We have many cats. You heard it here first. <laughs> so what I'm saying is like, you, then that's actually probably a good tip for all of them. There's, I don't know why billionaires, supposedly if they're really good at hiring people to do stuff for them so that they're not skilled enough to do anything themselves, why would they think that they're capable of taking on their own mental issues by themselves? Mm. Like, I, that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. They should all have at least three therapists. They should all have doctors. They should all be constantly worried about their health. They should have people to talk to, secretaries. Oh my God, Camille's people mm. are insane <laughs> you think well tina and ted i think are their names i mean she changes tina from beth yeah right and they fall in love because she's forcing these poor children to have sex with her yeah, they're like in their 20s her. but yeah that but was awful. it's in a contract so it's not this lady <laughs> right i'm glad she she got brutally murdered by a a chimpanzee a, chimpanzee. a demonic chimpanzee yeah yeah so I'm just saying, like, if you're a billionaire and you want to survive... But what would be the tip then? The tip is have people that you are capable of, if not trusting, at least unburdening yourself or with. Or buying their trust. You can purchase someone's trust for half an hour to, to talk and just, just to get a gauge. Am I crazy or is the situation crazy? Is this happening? Is this really happening? I mean, if you have that much money... That should be number one. Okay, okay. I'm following, I'm following. Plus, no billionaire is alone ever, right? You think? I, I don't know many billionaires. That doesn't... All right, if you're a billionaire, and can you please tell us you're never alone, right? Are you, you alone? have people. Are you ever alone? I don't know. Write it down in the comments below. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my tip. Yeah, that's it. so that's the tip? It's done? Just well, one tip? No. no, that was for Leo. <laughs> okay, okay. Let's keep okay. on going. Okay, so the next one is victory. Because I have zero tips. I am <laughs> glad these people are gone. Okay, so the next one is Victorine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So Victorine feels a ton of pressure from her dad. How it all starts mm -hmm. is that she feels the pressure from her father to get this done. Because it doesn't really work. It doesn't really work. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not even ready for human trials. It doesn't really work on the, on the, on the animals. Yeah. So you need more team, more of a team. Mm. You can't just have yourself. But she has a team, a team of one, as her and the, and her girlfriend. So. In but she's this... not trusting her to say to tell, the you know the nitty gritty of all the forging. Yeah, in this scenario, like the meeting that her dad has with her, mm -hmm. it should be, her, her dad, Alessandra, four top scientists. The animal care specialists. There, this should be a board meeting mm. of the board that runs the animal heart project, where everyone understands the progress up to any point. So he knows it's an unrealistic expectation that he should ask, "Is it going to be ready in six months?" Right. But let's say that he then said, "Let's say he was being a jerk about it, and he was like, I need it in six months, no matter what.'" It's like, then no, it, and then he would be like, you know, okay, then pull the funding. It's never going to be it. Well, no. Let's say then he's like, no, it must happen. It must happen. Then it's not just on Victorine. Mm. Then it's on... You can shift the blame. Yeah. Like, that's what billionaires do. Mm. They have people to take the fall. Yeah. Shit rolls downhill. Yeah. And if, if it's only her and Alessandra, it clearly rolled downhill into Alessandra with the conking on the head right. because there's not enough people right. <laughs> so yeah. that's my thing is like so what would be the tip the tip is understand how medical science works from the, the very get-go and hire people a bunch of people and have your dad involved in that he develops drugs how does he not understand this yeah because uh, again he doesn't develop anything he pays the people he understands well nothing. that's the thing like you, that way, you're on a conversation with your dad, bitching about how idiot the, the workers same, it's are. The same thing like that Elon Musk guy saying, like, yeah. you know, all manufacturing, everything we do is gonna be up to the the, the tens, one thousands of an inch. Which he's an idiot. Such he an does, idiot. He knows nothing about Tell manufacturing. Tell him the context. So in the Tesla truck, right? Okay, so the, the cyber truck, the cyber truck, which is a trash unveiled, truck, right? But the the cyber truck that he unveiled at saying that this is the truck that they have 
It's very unrealistic. Which was oh, in what? 2019. Four years ago now? It's extremely unrealistic to be able to manufacture that truck to the specifications for how you bend that metal. Yeah, yeah, because it's straight panels and you have to take into account how panels expand and contract to the due to temperatures of the sun you right. know, and uh, cold, te cold temperature. And moisture. And moisture and all that type and of all stuff. All kinds of things. That is the, that is the reason the why a lot of cars have contours and complex geometries so that the metal in itself is structural and you know can't take all that into account yes. when you have a straight panel it's just you know in fact just do it yourself take a take a paper and try to stand on its edge or put a book on it you probably can't now take the paper and fold it in half and then fold it again and do like a little triangle and try to place something on it most probably you can yeah depending and on the weight of the thing of course and the issue is consistency in manufacturing that vehicle and then and then guaranteeing that consistency maintained yeah. if you drive it across the country and if you're an idiot that does nothing and then you, you just do a blank statement that oh, oh everything that's going to be manufactured is going to be like to 0 0.001 millimeter that's, that's it doesn't make any sense that's like, he doesn't know what he's talking about just you being an idiot yes but that's that's again that mirrors what this show is that they don't care they don't need to understand nothing is because since they have all the money they can say whatever they want well that is so that is the concept but in terms of survival mm. these billionaires have not set themselves up to be able to even blame someone for the backing of their wrongful statement like mm. victorine should be in a conversation with her dad at the facility saying God, I, yeah, I mean, I can't believe we can't, we're not doing it in six months. You're right. And she should be bitching right along next to him at teams of people. Mm. She and her dad should be on the same side being jerks to other people. That's how she avoids the stress of it. Mm. Not by her dad confronting her saying, you need to produce results when, now I understand the dynamic between father and child is really messed up in this situation. So maybe there's nothing you can do about that. But yeah, but at like, that moment when, when he opened the door and saw the lady kind of like, you know, all opened up. Yeah. He realized. What I, he did. I fucked up. Yeah. That's what he realized. He did realize. And it was so interesting. He came to her house to tell her why he needed it in six months. Right. And to try and like. But it was too late. It she was, was too late. She was already gone. Yeah. She was already in Quacko Town. You know, there's another survival tip on this. Hmm. I, I can relate to this because of the stuff that I've gone through recently with my own job, my own work. If you're feeling a certain amount of stress or pressure or whatever, I think in your day-to-day -day job, whatever that is, especially probably if you're a billionaire, because I don't know, maybe that pressure is, you feel it higher because you have, you have no filtering system because you've been pampered your whole life. Like, I have no idea. I don't know. But like, if you start to feel that, I would say like, take stock maybe like take what take stock like like take a moment take a breath watch mm. some lo-fi videos yeah and those lo-fi i love them so much yeah. <laughs> I, I find them so uh, like get on with it <laughs> i don't like them it's like listen i don't i have stuff to do there is no time to just listen to just random soft music and watch a lady drawing and in, in her on her desk <laughs> Well, you have to, you know, stop and take over the world. Mm. Like, I can't take over the world until I feel good. Mm. So, yeah, and, yeah. and clearly, Victorine couldn't either. <laughs> yeah. You just needed to watch some YouTube lo-fi music. There you go. Lo-fi music would have saved Victorine. So that would be the tip. Watch some, <laughs> some, some YouTube lo-fi. I mean, some serious anti-psychotics as well. Mm. <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure if you're a billionaire, you can get them in two nanoseconds. Yeah, probably. But um, here's okay. So let's go on to the third one. Tam okay. Tamerlin. Tamerlin. Yeah. Yeah. Just Tamerlin. For me, it would be don't randomly break glass if you don't have any shoes on, or or safety goggles, you know, or, or safety equipment. Right. Well, at that because point, if you think... at that point he was like, okay. One second, I'll be with you right away. And then she, she goes, she puts on goggles, she puts on an apron, she puts on boots, you know, <laughs> she puts on gloves, 
and she gets a bat she and puts then on her PE. And yeah, right? All the, you know, all the, the protective the, equipment. The per, personal protective equipment, you know, all the BBE. And then she goes, okay, bitch, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Right? And then starts breaking shit up. She <laughs> would be fine. Nothing would have happened to her. And she could have broken all the glass she wanted. All she had to do is get all her PPE. That would be that would be her tip. Get all the PPE, put it on, and then break everything. Right? Um, I would say if you're a billionaire, you probably have been in some of those rooms where you can destroy everything it's right. just called your house because you're a billionaire right you can just replace it I don't you can know. do whatever you Burn want it down or do whatever right you can get another set of like egyptian rock eyes right yeah just throw those out the window yeah yeah you can talk to hobby lobby and they will hook you up <laughs> <laughs> if you know you know you know <laughs> so so um Anyway, so I feel like she should be able to get this. She should just call someone in two seconds and be like, listen, I'm having some sort of breakdown. I need PPE here right now. Right. Right now. Then Again, just... she doesn't have enough minions. How are you a billionaire and you don't have at least four she, well, people her on min- staff? Her minion was her husband, her husband, which she just chose out of a lineup because he was the, the, the one that, you know, most fit her the brand that they wanted to do. You know... That scene was so sad for me. It was, it was heartbreaking it for was him. Heartbreaking. He was so he was in this moment trying to reach yeah, her. Like I love you. Yeah. And she's like, I don't. I don't love you. <laughs> you were just chosen. I can choose anybody else. Oh, here's another survival tip. Just get enough sleep. Right? Just sleep. Just sleep. Just sleep. And you yeah. know, she was like, she she tried and she couldn't go to sleep. I'm like, stop taking Ambien. Okay, yeah, that's I mean, gonna mess go you up. To, a, to you know, to a professional, you know, a health professional, your doctor, and say, and they will, they will probably give you stuff so you can sleep. Yes, I mean, if you, I mean, I would say just take some nice tea, chamomile tea, and right. Honey at night, and you just work drink. out. You know, do all the workouts that you can. And you'll be so exhausted. You'll be so exhausted. That you will sleep. Yeah, trust us. We are working out a lot right now. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I think that that's. That's a good survival tip. Yeah. How about you, 1% billionaire that is probably not watching this show? How would you survive yes. this uh, this uh, situation with the, what I call, Anunnaki? <laughs> right? Yeah. How do you survive the Anunnaki yeah. in the House of Audrey? Be sure to leave a comment of how you would have survived these episodes. Episodes 4, 5, and 6. And I mean, six. if you have any idea about the first three, you can post them down below too. Post those too. Yeah, like the video, share, do all the good stuff. Yes. And all that stuff. Yes. Please make sure that you put the little icon, the little, what is it? It's a bell. Yeah, the little bell for notifications. Well, because we're doing another one of these tomorrow. For the ones that are listening on podcasts, we're talking about the little bell on YouTube. Yes, but in the podcast, you can also Subscribe. use the little plus sign on Amazon. You subscribe on a lot of the other ones so that when they come out tomorrow, mm. you get a notification. Yeah, they, our episodes come out first on podcast, podcast platforms just because YouTube takes uh, like three to four hours to upload, to analyze, to process 4K footage. Yes. It takes, I mean, today's episode, we, we it probably, was done at, yeah, at we one. Posted it? No, not at one. It was it was ready at around five, and then once it finished processing, it was like eleven forty when it finished processing. That's true. Sometimes it's random. Sometimes it doesn't. One hour. Sometimes it takes like five. So if you want to catch it as quickly as possible, the podcast is the way to go. Yes. Now, if you have movies or TV shows that you would like us to cover. Please send us a comment and let us know what you prefer. Yeah, yeah. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Please remember, be vigilant, be brave, be the last one standing. Always. Always.